Hi friends, it's Stephanie with Steph's on a Budget. Welcome back for another video. Today we're going to set up the second November budget with me. So we are getting paid on the 17th and <laughs> I should have had this done a couple days ago. Um, but that's okay. We're, we're going to throw it together. Um, it's Friday already, so I've gotten paid and I need to just plan out all this money <laughs> before it magically walks away. Like money tends to do. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at the monthly spread and we are going to be looking to pay everything in the brown. Um, so we have a few expenses, but um, just the way that the paydays and stuff fall, um, I think it's going to be kind of lower than what we're used to. Um, and I'm kind of rushing through because I'm, it's like the least opportune time for me to be filming a budget with me. I'm trying to get Kennedy ready for school, <laughs> but I've got to go help my mom. She's doing a craft fair today. So I'm going to spend the day up there helping her. So I have the day off from work, which is super exciting, but I wanted to get this done and up for you guys and for myself. So, um, let's jump on in, but yeah, we're going to be budgeting everything in Brown. So let's go ahead and flip over and grab out the November paycheck budget tracker. So, and then I'm going to get the book out of the way because you guys know this big old thing is just too much. And there seems to be a lot going on. Um, Kennedy's getting ready. The dogs are whining. I don't know why. But hopefully he'll stop. So I'm sorry if you hear the dog just like going crazy behind me. All right. And let me get some cushion paper. <laughs> you guys know me by now. All right, and for those of you that left some feedback in the last video about the zooming in and stuff, I really appreciate that. So when I'm editing, I'll be sure to kind of get zoomed in a little bit more for you guys. Um, okay, if you are new here, or if you're not, we're gonna go ahead and budget mine and my husband's full-time paycheck. So we both work full-time in the healthcare setting. Um, I work as a registered nurse, primarily from home, but I do some home visiting, and my husband works in anesthesia up at a hospital here. And we are just going to be expecting our normal full-time pay. So we're going to budget pay one and pay two. Now, normally I kind of budget for the lowest and then um, I make the adjustment when we get, when we get paid. We're both paid hourly now. Um, so there is some fluctuation and um, I also get a travel pay, which um, I should be getting this uh, payday. Well, should. I did. However, I want to um, take a page from Katie of the House's book. She had been talking about her husband working some different hours, so they were expecting a bit of a pay increase for him, more based on like having some more overtime and stuff. And she was not putting that in the budget, though, and was... Um, like going to use that just purely for financial goals um, outside of their normal pay. So she was saying they're going to use their normal pay to make sure that their household functions and to prevent kind of that lifestyle creep from happening because that pay will then change again for them. And I just thought, you know what, that is so clever because my husband and I have had a ton of lifestyle creep since we purchased our home. Um, this we're going to be coming up on our third year starting in our home and now our expenses have significantly gone up like our mortgage is double what our rent used to be um, we have two new car payments when we used to have one and then that got paid off so for a while we had just like we had zero car payments and then we had one and now we have two car payments that are higher than the one that we had to begin with so um, you know it, uh, just a lot of expenses have creeped back into our budget. And I thought that was just such a good way to look at it and to kind of prevent some of that. So I am going to try something new. Normally I'll budget for the minimum. And then I will, when the actual comes in, I'll usually add into sinking funds or savings challenges. Um, or sometimes I'll put it to extra debt, which are our saving goals in a way. So I don't think I've been doing it poorly. 
I just think we could do it better. Um, obviously, our goal is still debt freedom. We have a lot of debt that we want to get out of, ideally, if we can, in four years, um, which is a long time from now, but four years will pass fairly quickly. <laughs> so, um, you know, but I also want us to enjoy the next four years of our life. <laughs> I don't want it to be like pure pain either. So I thought that's such a great way to maybe just not budget that extra money. And then when it comes, we just throw it at whatever the goal is at that moment. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to give it a try. We'll see. Um, I'm a little nervous, like not budgeting for every dollar because I don't want those, like I said in the beginning of this video, I, I don't want those dollars to like start magically disappearing other places. So technically they're still going to get budgeted for. You all might not see that on the budget with me. Um, rather, I'm hoping you'll see it you know, in the updates when we're stuffing savings challenges, sinking funds, and paying off debt. So when we do those debt updates, I'm hoping you'll see that money there. <laughs> okay, really long-winded after I said we don't have a lot of time. Typical Stephanie. Let's do it. We are going to budget the minimum $2,800 for our pay one and the minimum $1,700 for our pay two, and I'm not going to budget the travel. So this is going to give us... Um, 4500 for our income and let me just double check that don't mind my ghetto calculator guys all my buttons started to wear off and i couldn't tell plus for minus anymore and it was driving me crazy and i thought let me sharpie it and now sharpie's just everywhere <laughs> so uh you know that's how it goes yep okay 4500 um for expenses we set aside half of our mortgage every payday so we're gonna have that. This is the second half that we're setting aside. So we are fully funded to pay our mortgage for December. Um, it's a little early, so I guess I'll hang on to it. And then this is November 17th of 2023. Okay, so we have half our mortgage. Then we have Netflix that comes out and I'm gonna um, just put a little A here to indicate that that automatically comes out of the account, and that's on the 19th. Oh, sorry. Half of our mortgage is $11.50, you guys. So I am still waiting. We're supposed to get our um, escrow analysis um, next week. So I'm like waiting with bated breath for that to come to see you know, what we're going to need to pay, if anything, to keep the mortgage at what it is now, because I do not want that going up. But, uh, you know, I'm just sitting here like fingers crossed, that, like next week can't get here fast enough kind of thing. <laughs> okay, Netflix is um, $22 a month for us. And then this is a paid off credit card. Um, however, my daughter bought an Oculus game and her Oculus is tied into this card. I'm not really sure why. Um, so I need to, to pay that. It's $17. So we'll, I'm going to throw that in there. Um, we also have our Discover card. So again, you guys, when I show you that monthly spread, you see all those expenses, right? And I'm always telling you like, this has a lot of credit cards that are paid off, but they're still in here and highlighted. And this right here is the reason why. Because I, you know, sometimes things are tied to things we don't really remember and we might use it, not intentionally or intentionally. Um, but I, I wanna make sure that I don't ever miss a charge on a card that I th think is not, doesn't have money on it, you know, so. That's why I leave those in there. That's a good example of that. Okay, our Discover card is due on the 20th, and we're gonna put 200 towards that guy. We have our Subaru payment, and that's the 21st, and we're gonna put 459 towards that. Um, next up, we have um, Kindle Unlimited. That's also an automatic, and that is on the 23rd. And that's for 13. Uh, I had a I had a brain fart there, you guys. <laughs> yeah, $13 for that one. Okay, then we have um, 
Kennedy's Cheer comes out and that's also automatic. And that's on the 25th for $65. And then we also have our iCloud subscription um, also on the 25th and that's for $11. Then we have Disney Plus that has gone up again. Also automatic. That's on the 26th and that's for $15. Um, we have our cell phones. So our cell phones um, are all, you know, like unlimited talk text, all that good stuff, you guys. We pay for six lines um, and that is $310. Now, sometimes it comes in at like 308. I don't know why it fluctuates as much as it does, but I always just budget 310. Okay, now the Apple card is paid off, you guys, but that we were paying 200 towards that and that was supposed to be our snowball um, but I was finding it was kind of like creeping into other things so I'm going back to kind of the old school method when I started budgeting this way in 2020 how I used to do it and I always just left these as a um like a line item in the budget like it was an actual bill rather than moving over here because in my head these are these are a um like non-negotiable they, they have to be taken care of no matter what and then when i start putting stuff over here there's more leniency right like they're not maybe a necessity but a want or i really sh need to be saving for these things but these there, these are obviously the priorities. So I'm going to put it back over here to make sure that money is going to where it's intended to go. Um, so we don't have um, a balance on the Apple, but we're going to pretend like we do so it gets paid towards our debt snowball. And that is $200. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, um, the you can see the bills are, um, these are our lower amount of bills and the beginning half of the month is always our higher amount so it always kind of gets a little lopsided um, as you guys saw in the last budget with me where I had you know previously saved half of the car payment and then brought it back in because it was so miss you know leveled um, so we're kind of in that situation again not quite to that extent but to help offset that a little bit I am going to pay go ahead and pay some of December's bills as well so um, we're gonna go ahead and make that student loan payment. That is technically not due till the second, which would be next payday, but we're gonna go ahead and cover that. And that's for 100. We're also gonna go ahead and cover our internet bill, which is due on the third for $60. Okay, that is everything you guys. Let's add it up and see what we owe for expenses. Okay, we have $2,622. Okay, perfect. So if we take that from our 4,500 of income, that leaves us with $1,878. We're gonna bring that down to our variable expenses. And this is the boring part, guys. Not a lot changes here. And I'm gonna tilt you a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, but we have our groceries. We budget for Costco, gas, miscellaneous, house and beauty. We budget for spending, takeout, um, water. This is for drinking water, not house water. And then this part is new. I am not keeping up with the amount of money we need for our dogs. Um, the sinking fund is just not filling as much as I need it to. So I need to change the way I'm handling that. And so it's no longer going to be a sinking fund, but rather a envelope. So we're going to go ahead and add pets in here because I need to consistently be putting a lot more money than I have been. Um, I have um, been going over budget probably consistently for the last six months. And Duncan really needs to get on a regular grooming schedule 
I never knew these little dogs needed so much upkeep, you guys, but it's insane. <laughs> what I really need to do is learn how to groom him myself. Has anybody ever done that? Let me know in the comments down below if you groom your own dogs, but I'm terrified to do that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Groceries is going to get its usual $300. i am bumping down Costco a little bit to $150. Gas is going to get its usual $175. 40 for miscellaneous, 40 for house and beauty. So I normally budget $200 each paycheck, which gives me $400 a month to shop at Costco, which is about what we are at. Um, however, I find that we are kind of buying a lot of like unnecessary things um, quite often, like way too many snacks that look good. And you know, Costco, you get these giant amounts of food. And then we have like these bags of different like chocolates and snacks that you like for maybe a couple days and then you're over it. So we're wasting a lot, you guys, and I'm kind of over that. So um, I'm gonna bump this down and maybe hopefully that'll prevent us from buying so much of that stuff, um, but we'll see. Um, okay, spending, I'm trying to get this down too. So we're gonna go with the 360 again. Takeout, I would love for this to come down, but it's just not happening, you guys. It's not even enough, but I'm gonna budget our usual 100. We need $30 for two weeks of water. And then I am going to put $25 um, minimum to pets every payday. And then maybe we'll throw more in with the um, sinking funds. So let's see what that gives us for our variable expenses. Okay, $12.28, you guys. So... 1228 and if we take that from our 1878 that leaves us with $650. That is a large amount of money. We haven't had that much extra in a long time and this is budgeting the minimum you guys. So I'm hoping this will help us get towards our debt. Now, the expenses are just low this time. This is unusual. This is not going to be every time. This is about $400 less than, than normal. And it's because December for us is a three payday month. And so, um, you know, we're, we're not covering as many December bills as we normally would with the second half of the check. Okay, so we've got 650 that we're gonna roll up here to our sinking funds. And what we're gonna do with that is, um, this part is always the hardest for me. Christmas is gonna get 100. For sure we have our month ahead which gives us 33 so this hundred dollars is going to put us over our fully funded which is great um, anything over fully funded for christmas is just a bonus for us i am starting to shop now and things are significantly more than i was anticipating so <laughs> i think any extra money we can have towards christmas is going to to help us tremendously. So, um, okay. Then we have our, I'm just going to start calling it the debt binder, you guys, cause just because, um, obviously we want a big chunk of money to go here. I'm going to put $300 towards that binder, you guys, because I want to get my debt paid off. Um, let's see. Um, my daughter has decided that she is going to wrestle and so she needs wrestling shoes and that's going to cost me a hundred dollars so i'm going to kind of cash flow that thankfully we're able to this time so 650 minus let's see where we're at you guys okay perfect and then um i ended up having one last um I had to cancel like our pest control in, it was, I think it was last month, October, they were supposed to come and I had to cancel cause they were doing like construction here on our street and you couldn't get in here to save your life. So I was like, please don't come. It's a nightmare here. And I just thought, okay, I'm going to not just get my last service cause it's already pretty cold now, but they've been calling and I was like, okay, I, I clearly need to get this done. So they came on Thursday. Um, they already took it out of my account. I need to pay myself back that $108. 
Um, I do have a house sinking fund. It doesn't have, it only has half of this amount. I could certainly pull from that, but I'm not going to. I want to get that built up. So I'm just going to go ahead and cash flow that as well. Um, so that is going to leave us with $9, you guys. So um, $9, we're just going to leave that in the... Um, the checking buffer. So it'll just kind of rebuild that buffer back up that I'm still working on um, from, you know, helping my son out. So, you know, it's not a ton, but every little bit helps and every dollar is now accounted for. Let me just add these up separately so I can put that number in there for peace of mind. That's 641 going to our savings and debt. And That leaves us with the nine dollars and then that brings us to a zero base budget you guys which is what we like to see again zero base meaning that i don't have zero dollars in my account i had just counted for every dollar that we're getting paid for even if it's just sitting there and then anything over this you guys is just going to be a bonus either to our sinking funds which you'll see when we stuff um our um debt in some way or another. So um, it's only going to go towards goals. So, um, you know, it, it just gets worked into where it needs to go, which primarily should be debt. All right, guys, that is a look at our November 17th budget with me. I felt a little crazy um, trying to rush, but still talk to you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is a look at how we're going to manage our expenses for the next two weeks, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you'll be uh, notified of my upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one, friends. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye now.